Tiptoe walking is more commonly a neuro neurological issue than it is a structural issue. You've probably seen my video about tiptoe walking and I'm here to give you a little bit more of an explanation. So my son was a tiptoe walker. He was diagnosed about nine months old. His pediatrician told us that he had hypermobility in his hip joints and that happened to be around the same time that I was in like this deep dive of neurological processing and reflex integration for another one of my kids. So I started checking his reflexes and digging in even deeper to see how these things correlated because telling kids fix your feet, um, that's a cognitive top-down approach and I saw that it wasn't working with the hundreds of kids that I saw in and out of the clinics every day. So um, I wanted to know more. Okay, these are some of the exercises that we did that legitimately fixed the issue for my kid. If your kid tiptoe walks and they don't ever outgrow that then it can cause shortening of the soft tissues in their legs and cause posture issues cognitive development even because it all goes back to the brainstem tiptoe walking is more commonly a neuro neurological issue than it is a structural issue it's probably related to retain primitive reflexes so the tonic labyrinth reflex is called the TLR and that's one of the initial reflexes that integrates by the time they are six months old and it's really common for kids to not let go of that and um, whenever a kink kind of happens in that system, a sequential phase of development and whenever there's like one little kink in that system, it can kind of throw off the other one. So the TLR reflex is... Um, their body is like seeking extension. So they keep an upright posture, straight back and tiptoes. The next reflex that could be at play is the STNR, the symmetrical tonic neck reflex. That is a critical um, reflex for helping babies transition from lying down into a crawling position. Whenever they move their head up, their hips and legs flex. And so, that reflex, if it does not integrate, it causes them to have um, poor dissociation from upper body and lower body movement. So when they get up on their tippy toes, their full body is going into extension. If they can pick their head up into a normal posture, then that is extension and it triggers their full body into extension. The STNR should integrate by nine to 12 months old. And it's really common um, to see that in some older kids that are having emotional maturity problems or motor coordination issues. The moral reflex is the startle reflex that an infant usually has at birth. And it kind of goes away until, or by the time they are six months old. And that is their like fight or flight reflex. If that's still intact, then their body goes into extension with subtle head movement, which is correlated to the vestibular or balance system. If the brain reflexes don't integrate, then their body will choose to stay in a comfortable position even if it's not really functional you can go to pt or ot um and if they're not using incorporating primitive reflex integration then i think you should follow along if you're using braces or verbal commands to tell them fix their feet giving them supports around their ankles and legs um sometimes those might be necessary but if it's a neurological problem then those things are not going to be effective if you get down to the root cause we just have to fix those chains in, in the development and the rest of the body is going to learn to follow. That's how we were designed. One of the things that I do differently than any other therapist that I have seen is that we always, always incorporate the vestibular component, which is the balance system that's inside your ear and that communicates with your sensory systems. Whenever you incorporate that vestibular input using the ball and the swing and um, movement, postural reflexes, your body, you're literally turning on all of those sensory systems at the same time and training the body to communicate effectively. You're stimulating the vagus nerve, the proprioceptors, and the vestibular system. And those are the three huge triggers that really send kids and nervous systems into a spiral. We can see loads of problems with their behavior as they get older. Okay, so here are my three favorite exercises. Number one is this ball workout. We're using the proprioception, vestibular, and um, the stimulating the vagus nerve to, to train them how to react and regulate their nervous system with head movement and input, sensory, different types of sensory input. So the first ex exercise is in prone over a therapy ball that just means on their belly push them forward to check that they have a good protective extension reflex where they shoot their arms out so they don't smack their head on the floor if you just work in prone over the ball a few times while you hold their legs then they will 
get to where their full body goes into extension. That means their head all the way down to their feet is going to flex and be tight in a curve. Um, so whenever you do this exercise, you're gonna get them into that position where they're extending their legs, the legs are straight and stiff, and you are supporting them only by their legs. And we are moving into flexion. That means we're gonna hug the ball and come back up to go into extension again. Hug the ball and then do Superman. Hug the ball and Superman. Hug the ball in Superman. This helps to train that STNR reflex, break up, we're breaking up the pattern of head and leg movement. The second exercise is retraining the gait pattern where we are walking. Typically when you put a beanbag under a kid's chin, they're gonna tip, they're going to, that means their chin is in flexion and they are going to walk flat footed anyway. Um, we, you can make that into a fun relay game where they go back and get 10 bean bags or five, however many they will tolerate. And um, just try to make it super fun for the kid and be challenging and engaging and cheerful. Never make this a punishment or um, a, a fearful exercise. And then the third last exercise that we're gonna work on is the deep squat a lot of times kids will compensate and go they'll they'll kind of round their shoulders forward and squat down and sometimes they'll sink all the way to the floor when they go into a squat position and this is not what you want to see you don't want to see them go all the way down into the floor with rounded shoulders we're going to try to keep their shoulders back and head back and squat down just as far as they're able to maintain it with their own strength and then stand back up and just do one or two at a time if that's all that they can tolerate like I said make it super fun and exciting we don't want it to be a torture exercise session um a lot of times these kids are low tone and they hate exercise anyway so we need to make it a game make it fun one of the things that you can do to help facilitate the shoulders back position is to take an object like this one up against their chest and have them hold it with both hands against their chest while they squat and if you need to, you can give them a visual target on the wall to look at while they squat to keep their eyes maintained. And I recommend just doing this a few times as long as they can tolerate it. You're not doing anything wrong. There are so many kids that have these retained reflexes and many parents don't even know it. Um, that, that could be the root cause of their children's like behavioral issues. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and find me for some more brain balance tips.